If you are an applicant applying to the 2023 match, the NRMP just released a new application that you will have to complete. If you would like to know all of the details about this new application that you need to complete in conjunction with your EOS application, then all I have to do is watch this video until the end. And of course, if you like this type of content, pour up the like button, hit subscribe, and that notification bell so that you never ever miss another video like this. So in 2022, the NRMP announced a new application called the Supplemental Application. It was only specific for specialties like internal medicine, categorical surgery, and dermatology. However, many other specialties have also joined in on applicants submitting this supplemental application. If you are applying to the 2023 match, it's very important that you know everything about this because it is more time consuming because you have to complete the traditional ERAS application along with this new supplemental application. However, it's important that you know that the supplemental application is not for all specialties and it is not for all programs. So you might be wondering, what is a supplemental application? Well, for this application, you are able to state your geographic preferences. You can let programs know whether you prefer rural or urban programs. It is also an opportunity to let programs know of any meaningful experiences or impactful life events that you may have that you want them to know about. But one of the hugest advantages for the supplemental application is that you can send program signals. Program signals are meant to be a way of applicants notifying specific programs that they really, really, really want to match into their programs. And this could potentially increase the chances of that program to send you an interview invitation. So let's take a closer look at the timeline for the 2023 match application. So when it comes to the supplemental application, in April to June, there will be resources published for applicants on how exactly you can complete this supplemental application. This information has not been released as yet, but if you want to be notified of when that information is released and details of it, all I have to do is to make sure that you are subscribed to my channel. And then in July, a list of programs that are participating will be published. Because like I said before, that not all programs will be utilizing this supplemental application. So it's very important that you are aware of what programs are. So if you have that program on your list, you know that you have to complete this supplemental application as well. So on August 1st, that is when the supplemental ERAS application opens. So you can then start to complete your application on ERAS for submission starting August 1st. So make sure that you circle that date on your calendar. And then finally, on September 16th, that is when the supplemental ERAS application closes. But a pro tip is that you do not have to wait until August 1st to at least start brainstorming what different meaningful life events or experiences you can input into your supplemental application or think about what programs you'd like to signal because all the information would have been released or be available to you well before August 1st. Last year, many applicants were rushing or very confused, overwhelmed with the supplemental application. So it's best to just start early so that you're not in the position of submitting late applications or one that is not well written or well thought out that can place you in an advantageous position to increase your chances of matching. So now let's take a closer look at the participating specialties for the supplemental application. Last year, internal medicine, dermatology, and general surgery participated in this. And again, they will be doing it. So if you're applying to any of these specialties, then you definitely have to submit your supplemental application. The new specialties that will also be participating in this new application for the 2023 match 
are adult neurology and anesthesia, diagnostic and interventional radiology, emergency medicine, and neurosurgery, internal medicine and psychiatry. So remember that they're like combination programs. So the IM Psych combined programs, they're also participating in the supplemental application. OB Gyne and Pediatrics. Psychiatry and PM and R. So that is the total list of participating specialties for the supplemental application for the 2023 match. If the specialty that you are applying to is not on the list, you definitely can't breathe easy and I will tell you why later on in this video. First, I need to tell you more about what exactly these specialties are asking of applicants. So for the I am Psych combined programs, they want you to list your geographic preferences and your meaningful life experiences. And they will provide you with two program signals. So you can only signal two programs for the I am Psych combined residency. However, for adult neurology and dermatology, you can signal three programs. You can also list your geographical preferences and experiences. For physical medicine and rehabilitation, you can signal four programs and also list your geographical preferences and important life events or experiences. However, General surgery, psychiatry, and anesthesia really bumped up the number of signals because you can signal five programs for these specialties. Again, you can also list your geographical preferences and experiences. So if you are applying to any of these programs, you're just going to have to wait to see what programs are participating in the supplemental application. And then based on that list of programs, Decide which ones you are going to signal. For emergency medicine, you can also signal five programs. However, you cannot list your geographical preferences and experiences. So emergency medicine is just focusing on the signals. So they just want to know, hey, are you really, really interested in us or not? And then for diagnostic radiology and interventional radiology, you can signal six programs and you can also list your geographical preferences and experiences. And then we have pediatrics and neurosurgery. Unfortunately, they have not released the number of programs that you can signal. However, the NRMP did indicate that they will release this information in April. So if you're not already subscribed to my channel, ensure that you click the subscribe button and that notification bell so you don't miss that video with the updates about the supplemental application for the 2023 match. So for pediatrics and neurological surgery, you can list your geographical preferences and your meaningful life experiences or events as well. So what's completely different now is ob Guide. They did something completely different because you cannot list your geographical preferences and experiences. However, they allow you to signal 18, yes, 1, 8, 18 programs. So they split it into two groups, gold programs and silver programs. So I guess the gold is a, is a program that you really, really want to go to. So you have three gold programs that you can signal and 15 silver programs that you can signal as well. So the reason why I was saying if you are applying to a specialty that's not listed, why you can't breathe easy is because the NRMP specifically states that additional specialties may decide to use the supplemental application data prior to the application opening. So remember, the application opens on August 1st for this new application. So there is a lot of time between right now of you watching this video and August 1st 
where other specialties could decide to join in and want to also use the supplemental application. So you have to be constantly checking the NRMP and making sure that you're up to date about this information. But if you can't bother to do that, don't worry. As long as you are subscribed to my channel, I do that for you and make sure that you are aware of what other specialties are added to the list of specialties participating in the supplemental application. And there are some other huge updates that you need to know if you are planning to do the USMLE or applying to the match. The first update is about the USMLE Step 2 CK. And that is that there will be score delays. So if you are doing your Step 2 CK from June 29th to late July, then you won't be getting your results until August 10th or onwards. So if you do your USMLE Step 2 CK right now, you can expect your results in two to three weeks. However, if you wait until June 29th or beyond, then you can be waiting like six to eight weeks. So bear that in mind. And the next update is that the information on the new eSafeMG pathways for this year will be released in April to June. So make sure that you're subscribed so you don't miss that video about the detailed information for the new eSafeMG pathways. And if you are doing the USMLE Step 1, there are also score delays for this exam. So if you sit it on or after May 2nd, you won't be getting your results until July 6th. That is so long of a wait. So bear this in mind if you plan to sit your exam on or after May 2nd. And if you want to find out more information about the USMLE process or applying to residency programs, all I have to do is click this video right here.